Welcome to the Campus Edge, a production of Butler Community College, produced by students and for everyone, students included. This is the second Campus Edge of the semester with a hand-picked selection of stories for your information and entertainment. Hope you're sitting in a comfy chair because this is the Campus Edge. One of the most common complaints of students is a lack of funds. Campus Edge reporter Slade Wiley spoke to Butler President Dr. Kim Kroll with a possible solution. The Kansas Promise Scholarship makes educational dreams come true. Let's take a look. Today I had the opportunity to speak with Kim Kroll about the new Kansas Promise Scholarship and what some of the finer details and requirements of this scholarship are. The Kansas Promise Scholarship is available to um, Kansans across the state. The scholarship dollars are available for the community and technical colleges across the Kansas system. And then there's some four-year institutions that are able to distribute that funding too if they have associate degree programs. And so as long as a student is um, within 12, right now, right now, as long as a student's within 12 months out of high school graduation, um, 21 years of age or older, um, has been a Kansas resident for at least three years, uh, military dependent, a homeschool student. Those are the residency or the requirements right now. Now, we know that um, in the next legislative session, they're going to take out that age limit. So there'll be a little bit of difference in the, in the scholarship requirements um, for next year. But for right now, those are the requirements. Some of the other uh, things that are part of the Kansas Promise Scholarship that students have to think about um, as they look into their eligibility and, and consider whether they want to accept those dollars. Students have to finish their program of study within 30 months. They can start and stop if they need to, but they have to complete that degree or that certificate program within 30 months. They also, if they accept those Kansas Promise dollars, are required to stay in the state after they complete their degree program and work for two years at least. And if they don't um, fulfill those requirements, then they have to pay those dollars back to the state of Kansas. And so there's a lot of discussion and a lot of um, understanding and a lot of explanation that needs to happen and does happen on the front end so that students understand when they sign that agreement for Kansas Promise dollars, here are the requirements that you have to fulfill in order to be able to use those dollars. Don't just automatically think that you don't qualify. Talk to advising, uh, talk to folks in financial aid, we've got folks that can help you walk through that process and get a clearer understanding of, of um, whether, it's a, whether it's a good fit for you or not. It's a last dollar scholarship, and so what that means is that you you know, if you have any federal financial aid, if you have other scholarships, that all gets applied to your bill first. And then if you have anything left over for tuition, books, um, course fees, uh, required course materials, uh, then, it, then the Campus Promise comes in and will cover the rest of that. And while this scholarship may not be for everyone, it does provide an opportunity for education that many people never had. COVID has impacted our lives in a multitude of ways, including the fine arts scene in Butler County. You realize it's been four years since Butler's theater department performed a musical? Reporter A.J. Jones spoke with Professor Chad Ingram about this and other fall performances in the fine arts department. I spoke with Chad Ingram about what Butler students can expect from the Fine Arts Department this semester. My name is Chad Ingram. I teach vocal music, I teach music theory and aural skills and applied voice, and I help with chamber singers and the headliner show choir. The very next thing coming up is actually this Friday and Saturday, October 8th and 9th, we have our instrumental music concert here on campus in the theater and our director is Mr. Brett Martinez and he directs a concert band and a show band and jazz band and several different small ensembles. So it'll be a lot of different variety of music. And then the following week, October 15th and 16th, is the first vocal music show. And it would be Friday and Saturday both at 7.30 and then 2 o'clock again on Saturday we have a matinee. 
and we have several different ensembles. We have a concert choir and chamber singers that sing a little more classical music. We have a male and female barbershop quartet. We have a fully choreographed and costumed show choir, the Butler Headliners. And finally, Matt Udlin directs the pop a cappella group, which is called Acapella. And they have a beatboxer, and they do all their own arrangements. And Valerie Mack is the chair of vocal music and dance, and so she kind of heads the ship. And one of the cool things is that our art department has a gallery here in the 700 building, and they have different exhibits that open on different dates. And the nice thing is they run for several days. So October 21st is their next art gallery opening, and that gallery will run for several days. And the art faculty are located in the 300 building. So you can, and then in November, which is very cool, is the whole fine arts division is coming together to put on a musical, The Pajama Game. And this is the first musical in four years that has happened here at Butler, and that is November 18th through 20th. I'm A.J. Jones, reporting for the Campus Edge. 90 seconds of public service messages, then more stories of interest coming up on The Campus Edge. Oscar the Grouch here to tell you, yeah you, to wear a mask out in public around other people. Sure, it'll keep you healthy, but more importantly, I won't have to see your happy smiling face. <sighs> and if you don't want to wear a mask, I've just got one thing to tell you. Scram! Go away! <sighs> Caring for each other because we are all in this together. So wear a mask and have a rotten day, will ya? Mm. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously, and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Veterans give so much to our country and we should return the commitment. Reporter Hayden Cole spoke with Ashley King, supporting veterans with Sojourners, her donation only coffee shop. So we're a nonprofit organization for military and veterans. Um, we operate as a regular coffee shop like any other. Um, but we use our, our funds and donations for um, helping our military and veterans in the area. Um, our mission is two parts. The first is in-house. I just want to give them a home away from home and a place where they can come and be together in a healthy environment and form relationships. Um, and we have small groups for them, some unstructured, and then some for resiliency and PTSD and anxiety and things like that. In order to stay true to my mission here, um, our groups are specific to military and veterans and their families. Um, and that's just one, a capacity thing, because um, my husband and I founded it and we just started and, you know, just making sure that our foundation is what we set out to do. Um, and then also for spouses, that's important to me too. So, yeah. We have um, pretty much everything that a regular coffee shop has. So we have coffee drinks and espresso and hot chocolate. Um, and then we also have Lotus Plant Energy, which is like a caffeinated, carbonated fruit soda. Um, that's pretty good. Um, and, you know, blended drinks and all the things. Yeah, we, we do serve pastries um, that are all home-baked for us. And um, we have sandwiches every day from 11 to 2 for lunch. I think it's very important. Um, so our, our veterans, especially now, are struggling. Um, and this place gives them somewhere they can come anytime. They don't have to call, they don't have to make an appointment, don't have to wait for a seat. Um, I've made a safe and comfortable place for them to meet and gather. And um, they can come anytime. But my goal is to give them people that they can call 
and people they can lean on when they need to or when they're struggling at three in the morning when they feel, you know, um, alone and when they're struggling, they have someone to, that they can call. Um, that's my goal here, is to give them a community amongst themselves. And I think it is important. Um, I was just speaking to a veteran yesterday um, that was in Afghanistan when we first went in and he's lost several members of his squad just in the last few weeks. And this place, if I can keep one veteran from doing that, if I can give somebody, one veteran, somebody to call to keep them from giving up, to keep them from quitting, then I've done what I'm meant to do. Losing someone is always hard, from the emotional to the economic. Preparing for the inevitable can be difficult. I recently interviewed Mark Shelton to find out how Barnes Monuments makes this process easier. Losing a loved one is one of the hardest things to endure. It's even harder to create a memorial to do their legacy justice. There may be a place I can help, though. On the corner of Main Street and Southwest Street lies a little business called Barnes Monuments. Barnes Monuments individually engraves, designs, and installs all of their products for every client. Most people have no idea what they're doing when they come in the door, you know. Um, and I, I was, you know, sitting on that side of the desk at one point in time, too. So. I try to I try to go back, you know, in time and remember that, and just take them through it step by step by step through the, you know, finding out what size of monument, what type of monument, what color they want, um, what kind of inscriptions they want on it, um, the whole nine yards. Just just take them one step at a time, and then we get to that point where, you know, in the end, we want them to be happy. That's the bottom line. So. Um, during the design process, we'll send a proof to them, and then if, you know, sometimes we get it right on the first go, and that's wonderful. But what we, you know, sometimes we'll send it to them and we maybe kind of misinterpreted what they might have said or the exact position of where they want something. So we'll make as many changes to that proof as the family wants you know doesn't matter if it you know if it's two times or 20 times we don't care we'll make the changes until they say that's perfect that's what we want from our perspective if there is one thing in the world that we absolutely do not want that's for anybody to have a monument that they can't stand you know that's just um, we just can't have that Life is full of unexpected surprises. Some of them are good and some of them are not so good. Um, at some point in time, probably everybody is gonna, uh, is gonna need this kind of a service. And so, um, if, if you have questions, I mean, I'm sitting in here all day, Monday through Friday, just come through the door. Um, I, I, don't do, I don't do any of this high pressure stuff or anything like that. If you have questions, I'll get you some answers. If you want to talk about it, if you want to learn about it, just go in and talk to somebody. You know, get an idea and um, keep wearing your seat belts. We'll wait for the business, you know. Hopefully, none of our viewers have to experience the pain of losing a loved one, but it is comforting to know that there is someone around town that can help in times of need. Dylan Dorf, BCTV. And that wraps up another episode of the Campus Edge from the lobby of the El Dorado Campus Student Union. If you want to see more Campus Edge, you can catch them on cable channel BCTV20, or you can check them all out on our YouTube channel, Butler Student Media, their permanent online home. Thanks for sharing some time with us. This has been the Campus Edge.